Thank you, my lady. Now, you agree that Mr. Daniels, on entering the bath room, on his version, his understanding, sawing your wife stark naked, he also could have seen the cord around her neck and the cord up fastened on the hook as depicted in his testimony and we've got exhibit MM2 now in front of us the 13 photographs exhibit MM1 just the one of the door correct correct And then he demonstrated it to us. He fastened this cord around her neck, and we've got the photographs, and he tightened it up around the hook. He agreed us to him. Seeing, standing you there, holding up Susan. Isn't that so? I can't talk for Mr. Daniels, but I'm... If one looks at exhibit double S, and I'm going to hand you a copy of that as well, and I've got an extra copy for the court. You don't have to. <coughs> His recollection on this photograph, exhibit double S, double S, is how he saw being naked and being held up by you. That's his testimony, correct? That was his testimony, that is correct. <coughs> and on being asked by you, he testified in the record page 166, 1, line 14, I removed the cord from my neck. Dit was nie stijf om my nek vastgemaakt nie, want ek kon dit makkelijk afgehaal het. That's his testimony. Correct? That's, if that's what you say he said, uh, that must be correct. He did not struggle to move that cord. It was not stiff on my neck. Was gemaakt. Want to comment? As I previously stated in my testimony, that is certainly not my recollection of how it happened. He had to remove that that cord was tight around Susan's neck, and it wasn't a simple matter of him removing like a lasso type knot from around her neck. The state has got a difficulty with your recollection, sir. And we've dealt with it last week in cross-examination and had a look again at your explanations and I want to show you furthermore the difficulties that we have with what you see there and I'm pleased that Dr. Piramo is also in court listening. It's Piramo. My lady, I in a similar fashion would like to hand up a bundle. It is a further argument basing on the hanging scenarios that's before court in a bundle. I'm not going to deal with all of it. A lot of it is, is argument. Um, the previous exhibit is triple F. Maybe if that could be marked triple F1, 
and this bundle, triple F2, if the court pleases. So our last bundle was triple F, and so you wanted triple F1. Triple F1, and one I'm going to deal with now is triple F2. <coughs> and if the, if the projector can be switched on, then we can all see and follow the state's submissions put to this witness. Again, my lady, some of the photographs here we can't have in the media. Thank you. For the same reason. Now, we can go to slide two on exhibit triple F two. There in the middle, you see where you gave evidence uh, and you described how you saw her hanging, crouched forward, legs touching, correct? That is correct. Would you agree, as it's depicted there now with the red line, it's a relatively straight back that she had? Um, I described it as a crouching position. So I would have said she was a little bit more forward, but obviously it's very di difficult to demonstrate, but I described it as a crouching position. And her upper legs horizontal to the floor? Would that be so? I can't accurately tell you if they were horizontal or what degree they were at, advocate. Um, not qualified to make that assessment. And would you agree that the knees was angled more than a, a 90%? The feet sideways pointing to the basin? I can't comment on the angle, but I can, I distinctly remember that her feet were pointing towards the basin. That's correct. So what we're trying to establish here by this drawing I'm pointing to here in the middle of what we see on the screen is uh, there's some angle in the downward cord. It's not just straight down, correct? Yes, well, I, as I said, <coughs> I described it that she was in a crouching position. So <coughs> her body was, I mean, the way you've got it over there, it's at a straight line. My recollection was that she was in a crouching position, leaning forward. Well, what the state is just saying, and obviously it was, we weren't there, you were there. And that's why I'm describing it the way that, the way that I perceived it. There, there was some angle there, could have been a little bit more, as you are say. I understand you correctly? Between the door and this tight rope having down with the court. I mean, Advocate, you're asking me to make a comment on something like that. I, I, I can't describe the angle that the court was was coming off the hook from. I'm just, I, I can't. I think it's an, an unreasonable thing to ask me. You're stating it's unreasonable. Well, you were there, you're an eyewitness. Surely the state can ask you what you saw. But I've described what I saw, Advocate. That the cord, that she was in a crouching position, that her knees were bent, her feet were on the ground, pointing towards the basin. That's what I've described. And do I understand you correctly? You can't tell us whether it was a single or a double cord around her neck, or no, not I, on the side or the back? I, I, I cannot tell you that because I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to that. That detail you've got no recollection of. Why would I be studying the cord, the knot, when I've just discovered my wife hanging from the back of the door? Why 
on earth would I be paying attention to how many things there were? Well, that might sound logic in the circumstances, but what is not logic, the state will argue that says, you recall in great detail, minute detail, I'll put it to you, how um, your wife prevented you from leaving the room when you wanted to go to Jolene Alteskai and how it was not hitting her but you made contact with the tip of the nose and then you made it contact with her face and connect with her nose and you repeated that testimony as if well rehearsed Now you can't say us what happened there, what you saw. Advocate, I've just discovered my wife hanging off the back of a bathroom door. I think it's a little bit, I think it's reasonable to expect that you go into a complete state of shock. So I don't think you can compare the two scenarios. Put it to you, sir, that you placed her behind the door. You staged this scenario that we're trying now to unravel. You put the cord around her neck. That is absolutely untrue. There is no truth in that whatsoever. Advocate, none whatsoever. And apart from what I'm going through with you, Mr. Desmond Daniels, innocent bystander stumbling onto this, the state's argument will be based on the science here. We can have the number three slide based on the science here it doesn't make sense what you're telling us the tightness of the rope what I've depicted here with assistance trying to figure out how was that knot or the noose tied if it was a knot one part of the cord with another in such a way that the resultant noose can apply sustained force on the neck. You understand what's depicted there on the left side of this picture? Yeah, I mean, I, I can read what, what's depicted there, yes. Well, according to your evidence, there was a tightness even after you lifted her from the floor. So, either there was a knot to cause that tightness, in theory, you would agree, correct? You've asked me this question before, advocate, and I'm going to reply exactly the same. I'm not an engineer. I'm not qualified to talk about knots and nooses and what applies tension, etc. So you're asking me questions that I'm not qualified to answer. There was a point of suspension based on your evidence. Here on the right hand side is depicted an inverted V shape. May or may not involve a knot. We simply don't know because you can't recall about a knot. I, I've never, that what you've just pointed to there now, advocate, with that uh, cord behind the back of her neck, I've never testified to that. I've made it very clear that I didn't see how many loops around Susan's neck or if there was a knot or there's a cord. So what you've just depicted there 
is something that you've just put down. I've never testified to that, Advocate. The problem for you, sir, is that she was suspended on that double strand. You testified to that. That's how you found her, hanging, suspended. You understand? That is incorrect. I was asked whether it was a single or a double strand. And I told you on numerous occasions, and I think my, you, you even asked me, was it split? Was the cord split when it was coming down? Those were your words to me, and I said I wasn't sure. Can we have slide two, please? There's a suspension. That's how you found her, hanging, suspended on that cord. You can't deny that, sir. No, I, I can't deny that. Now, slide four. And I'm quoting, and I'll move on because it's, it's medical terms. The point of suspension, I've referred there to diagrams from the RBC of Agaratica Geneeskere. If there's a tightness, some other way we must work out where's the point of suspension. We will deal with that with Dr. Perum. But complete this sake, I need to put this to you. Either at the back of the neck or at the side of the neck, around under the ear. You understand? I understand that. And the state's difficulty is that we don't see what we see here. One of these positions clearly marks on her neck, on her body. But as I said, we'll deal with that with Dr. Perumal. Do you understand our difficulty with the tightness? That's the important point. You want to comment? I think you must put that argument forward to Dr. Perumal. I think it's a very scientific argument and I'm certainly not qualified to talk about it. And, but I'm sure Dr. Perumal will have a view on it. Now, the state's further difficulty, and that's why I have to come back to this, why we worked on your version over the weekend. If we can have slide five, it will be put also to Dr. Perumal that there are three possibilities with a noose. It's either the two strands run together from the hook down towards her neck, both go around and tie it together around the neck. That's the one possibility. You can't help us with that, on your recollection. Tied around her neck. No. The double strand. It could have been, but you didn't see it. As I've said repeatedly, the answer to that is no, advocate. Or, as depicted in the middle, sketch two strands run separately from the hook. The hook up there. Only one strand down towards the neck and the other one is hanging loose. One tied around the neck. Can you comment? I suspect my my answer will be the same for all three of your examples up there. You're asking me to, to speculate on something which I have no knowledge about. And then the third possibility is the two strands ran together from the hook, but from the knot only one goes around the neck and the other one hangs loose. You don't want to comment? No, that's not what I said. I'm not in a position to comment. It's not that I don't want to comment. If I, if I know the answer to something, I'll give it to you. But if you keep asking me the same question when I've told you that I don't know the answer to it, my answer is always going to be the same, Advocate. Well, I'll try and move quickly through this. The difficulty is you were there, you said it was tight. Now, if we look at the next slide, six. The 
state can think of two types of knots. A knot that is fixed, it can't glide, the noose can't get bigger or smaller. So it's, and it was tight. So somehow she got that knot tight at first around her neck, according to you, because you said she hanged herself, and then she fell forward, suspended, and that caused her death. Do you understand that? I understand that. And then the argument will go with a static knot like that. If you make the noose and the knot before putting it over your head, the whole noose cannot apply tension on the neck. So, if it was like that, tight, she must have tightened it herself, static, after putting it around her neck. And then to get it over the head means the noose will be bigger than the neck circum circumference. Will that be a play? But there wasn't a play here, right? That wasn't my recognition of Well, you of it. Sorry? That my Mr. Daniels didn't simply lift it off her head, as I've said before. Or the knot can glide and the noose can get bigger or smaller. But you can't help us with that, right? Correct. <laughs> then slide seven. Static or not static, the argument will be a double or a single strand. It is possibly or possible not to get a knot in print. Because we don't have a knot in print yet on the neck. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that because I don't know medically what the autopsy said. I've, Dr. Perimel will have to comment on that. Then the next slide, eight. We say it can't be like that around the neck because the neck will roll out of the, the noose if it's wrapped around a neck as depicted on this slide. Or there will be double tracks, but we've only got this one ligature mark that Dr. Khan testified about at the front. You understand? I understand that. My lady, Dr. Khan did not testify about the mark only on the anterior aspect. That was not his testimony. Well, so he's been inaccurately quoted, John. I think. I think. I think. May I address the court further on this? I'm having great difficulty with this entire annexure triple F2. We hand it up as an exhibit on no authority whatsoever. It hasn't been introduced at any stage whatsoever by the state, the prosecution as part of its case. There is no evidence to confirm anything contained in this document, and I have difficulty as to its status. Now this witness is being asked technical questions, and actually all that's happening is his evidence of last week, his cross-examination, is being retraversed. My learned friend had a weekend to reconsider the matter. He's produced another bundle of 50 or 40 odd pages of illustrations, and he's now traversing the same ground with this witness. If one or two of these, or some of these slides, are to be used to uh, examine or cross examine or put questions to Dr. It's Perumal or any of the other experts who are still going to testify, I have no difficulty with that. They are experts in this field. But not Dr. Kahn, not Dr. Abrams, and not even by a stretch of the imagination, Colonel Pullman even alluded to any of the information contained in this absolutely unsubstantiated document. Now, how can this witness be expected to comment from slide to slide on each of these items and each of these um, descriptions. He repeatedly said, I'm not an expert in this field, I can't comment, 
And this whole issue was traversed last week. Our learned friend is now wanting a second bite of the cherry with a whole lot of new documentation that he has conjured up during the weekend. That's not fair cross-examination. Thank you. Mr. Panikka? I just, sorry, you want an answer to that? You want to answer to that? You want to respond I, to that? I, I would like it. Thank My you. lady was going to say something. No, no. My lady, there's the issue of improbabilities that I need mm. to show to this witness. I agree. Um, the technical medical aspects, and I've indicated that. I will deal with, in cross-examination, should the defence call, and it seems Dr. Permol will be called. However, I need to challenge what we've put uh, in here, some of it. I'm not going to go to all of these slides. I think, succinctly put, I think Mr. Uh, Funnis Pay has an issue with the basis upon which you are traversing it with the witness. Um, to me, it seems that you're, you're sort of citing a scientific basis for it um, as to how these knots and uh, are, are, are what options there are. Um, I assume what you're trying to do is to point out to Mr. Rueda that the knot that he's referring to can only be uh, analyzed in certain forms. Yes, and I, I, the, the uh, sketches, or what do you want to call it, um, I, I agree. I, I'm not introducing that as evidence. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with that in argument mm -hmm. with the experts to come. Um, this is based on the photographs taken of the late Sue. No, and, and it's in here. And that's where I'm going with this witness. But I'll, I'll cut it short, my lady, if I may. You'd have to, from the point of view that, as you would recall, I said to Mr. Roder, there are where he's required to make uh, inferences of an expert nature, that he should refrain from that, and that he should simply give an account to what he's seen. What he says he hadn't seen, you can argue that to me as to what that means in the bigger picture. Indeed. But I will allow you to try and point out to Mr. Rueda that what he had seen was, would have been difficult in the context, but you've got to limit that. I will. Um, to the extent that his experts must guide us on that. I will. I want us to go to the slide twenty four. That depicts your late wife's. Photographs at the post mortem. You happy with that, sir? Yes. Now, the last point I want to make and I will traverse that with your expert witness is We go to slide 29 and from there onwards, the aspect of bruising and what the state will argue, the lack of bruising around the neck. Should it be true that the noose, the cord was tight around the neck? You understand that? I understand that. Once again, I think that's something you need to explore with the relevant doctors. Well, the, the, all, the point I want to make with you, sir, is that she did bruise easily. You agreed to that? Yes. And we've depicted on the following slides, we don't have to show that, 30, 31, bruises 
on her body as she was found. Now, the point of all these photographs further on is that Now I want to go to slide 39. This is not fair It is utterly confusing. My learned friend started by taking this witness to slide number 24, drew his attention to it and never asked him a question. He then jumped to these other slides and he asked, something about the absence of bruising around the neck, but he never put a proper question. He then asked Mr. Roeder whether his late wife bruised easily, and Mr. Um, uh, Roeder, the accused, confirmed that she did. Now he is leaving out those photographs, and he's going somewhere else. That's not fair. Okay, but you understand that Mr. Bonnie Carrick did not reference to that photo out of respect for Mr. Ruerde. Is, is that right? It's the content there of that you don't want to subject Mr. Ruerde to. I don't know what are in the, those slides. Sorry, I didn't go through it. My, my lady, if I can respond, I'm not sure whether my friend is finished. Thank you. Yes. What, what I'm trying, and I've been interrupted in doing that, is today a basis for the aspect of bruising. And that's the last point I want to make with these slides. And that's why I refer to some photographs and I put it to him as a statement that she bruises easily, which he agrees to. Now I'm at photograph, oops, uh, on the slide 39, photograph of Susan Ruder. My last statement would be that there is no bruising there. Okay, before we get there, can you please just go through all the photos? Don't skip. I'll do that. You'd we'll like to start from number 24. As the court pleases. Can we have slide 24? Now, do you see the similarities in slide 24, the photographs there, with 25? Slide 25, sir. Um, no, I'm not sure what I'm looking for. It is the same photograph, that's what I'm saying to you, but it's a closer up than depicted on 24. 24, 25. You see that? Now I see it, yes. Slide 26, that was introduced by your expert. Do you recall that? I don't remember seeing that photograph, but if that's what was happened, then I, I agree with that. As is the photograph on slide 27, your expert. Then on Slide 28, we've got the same photograph as in 24 and 25, and we've got one of your experts' photographs, the one on the left there. See that? I see that. Now, we get to slide 29. 30, 31, 32, it all depicts bruises on your late wife's body. You understand that? I understand that. 33 is close up of Susan's eye. You understand that? Yes. 34 is the bruise and evidence we heard about dumbbell, correct? Yes. Slide 35, the bruising, again, referring to photographs that we've already seen. You yes, understand? See those, yeah. We're back at close-up, the slide 36. 
Susan's body. 37, 38, we can pass because it's argument. It's nothing to do with you at this stage as non scientist person. And 39, 40, again, 39 is the, just keep it at 39, a close up of that area underneath her ear. And where the ligature mark state says ends there in that circle that's been drawn on the photograph you understand i understand so what the state is putting to you is that it simply can't be true that your version is correct that this cord was tight around her neck. Otherwise, there would have been signs of bruising. You understand that? Well, that's your version, advocate. That's why I'm putting it to you, why I put this together in the context of what Mr. Daniels testified. That, in fact, was what was true is that she was lying behind the door, as that door was pushed open, the legs were flat on the ground and was a single strand leading up to the hook. That cord was not tight around the neck. So you would like us to believe it's a lie. like me to comment on that? You free? Mr. Daniels was asked whether he saw Susan lying behind the door by Advocate Front of Spay on two separate occasions. And on both times, he denied seeing Susan lying behind the door. No, thank you. We can switch off. I'm, I'm finished with this aspect. So, Mr. Van Nikke, if you say lying behind the door, then you mean completely horizontal? Or no. I'm trying to understand your question. My, my summary of Mr. Daniel's evidence, and I'll get to it in detail now, I'll continue, no, is I'm that. Referring to the theory you put in, uh, to the, the witness. The theory is that Mr. Daniels testified that he saw the legs, the leg part from underneath the knee, couldn't see the feet, but that part was flat behind. But that, he doesn't know where her torso is. No, that's, that's not his testimony. We, we, we can later argue on what is stated in his statements on that. Okay. But so, no, to be fair to this witness, lying means legs on the floor and torso, I presume, suspended? What is your question? My, my, my statement to the witness, which mm. I put to him in a couple mm. of sentences, was that the state will argue mm. that the only inference to be drawn from Mr. Daniel's evidence was that she was in a lying mm. position behind the door. That's not his evidence because he, he didn't see a lie behind the door. And that it is correct that he did see a single strand hanging behind the door and it was loosely around her neck. That he testified to. The single strand being fastened, we've got this exhibit. That's what I put it to the witness, and he has answered that. Thank I understand. You. Now, <laughs> Mr. Van der Spey put it to Mr. Daniels. Record page 1783, line 16, that 
you were holding her under her arms, around, over her chest, holding her up. So Daniel said, near. What I can say is, I had her arms under her in. And that is exhibit SS. That's how Daniel saw her when he entered, <clears throat> how he saw your wife, and how he saw you holding her up. And that is the truth. That's what I put to you, So, Well, <clears throat> first of all, that picture is completely inaccurate. Because first of all, the cord, when Mr. Daniels was removing it from her round and neck, would have still been attached. And the way that that picture's been depicted, she's standing perpendicular to the door. So that, that picture is incorrect, Advocate. State of difficulty in accepting your version. On your version, she had the gown on and you were holding her up underneath her arms with the front part of her body towards you, correct? That is what happened. That is correct. So, Daniels must have seen the back and the shoulders of Susan, correct? Um, well, he came in because he also wedged himself through the, the gap in the door. So, <coughs> if I was holding her up like that, he would have been standing on my left-hand side. So, where were you facing? Holding her like that? I w she was facing me. Answer my question. So, I would have been facing towards, towards the door area, not over the way you've depicted this picture here. I'm facing towards the basin area. That is absolutely incorrect. You can leave that picture. So, you state you were holding her, the front part of the body, basically against you, and you were facing the back of the door, correct? Yes, in, that, di in that direction, yes. And where was the bath then? As you were standing like that? Well, the bath would have, would have been on my right-hand side and the basins would have been on my left-hand side. And the gown would have then, at that stage, covered her right shoulder, correct? Well, the gown was on. Yes, the gown was on. And it would have covered her right shoulder, correct? Well, if it was on, it would have covered her right shoulder. And surely then Mr. Daniels would have seen that, correct? But I'm telling you the gown was on. I can't talk for Mr. Daniels. I can only testify to what, what I saw. The gown was on that. Well. You're asking me, you asked me a question what Mr. Daniels saw. I can't tell you what Mr. Daniels saw. I can only tell you what I saw. Well, you asked him to come in. He came in. And his eyes must have been opened because he had to take this knot that's around her neck off, correct? Correct. And in direct sight of his head facing you, looking at you and Sue, he must have seen her right shoulder with the gown on. Isn't that so? I'm telling you what I saw, Advocate. Susan was wearing her gown. I cannot tell you what Mr. Daniel saw. I'm telling you the gown was on. My proposition to you is that he must have seen that gown covering her right shoulder. Yes or no? You're asking me to answer for Mr. Daniels. You should have put that question to Mr. Daniels. Was the right shoulder covered? Yes, it was covered. Thank you. Thank you.
Now, Mr. Daddles was taken to task, if I could call it that, by my learned friend about his demonstration about how many times this cord was around a neck and fastened on the hook, as we can see here on exhibit double M2. Do you recall that? I do recall Mr. Daniels' testimony. And you also referred to that when you testified about different versions, correct? That Mr. Daniels had on this, correct? Yes. And it was also in cross-examination put to Mr. Daniels and then Mr. Witz, the attorney here, um, demonstrated and we counted the loops around the cord as it was fastened different stage stages in this or these demonstrations on the on the top or, or on the hook the lower part of the hook correct i do recall that yes uh, you would agree that firstly mr daniels never was there when this cord was tied around the hook of the bathroom door you agree? Yes, I would agree with that. And he was also not present when that cord was put by whomever around Susan's neck, correct? Yes, I would agree with that. So it's fair to no, say... No, you can't say by whomever. The issues are in this matter. If the cord was put by the deceased herself, or, or the, accused. the state's allegation is by the accused, Mr. Rueda. But don't use whomever. I, I agree. Fair. My lady. Now, don't you think it's fair for Mr. Daniels to come and state that it's an estimate? He can't record exactly. Because he never. Thank you. I agree. <coughs> now, it was also put to Mr. Daniels, cross-examination at page 1789, line 13, that she was completely naked. Well, let me just get the full <coughs> statement, if you just allow me. Page 1789. At line 11, my friend put it to Mr. Daniels, you observe two things in your evidence in chief. The one, she was completely naked, and that must have come as quite a surprise or a shock or maybe an embarrassment to you. And he answered, yeah, yes. 
You would agree that's a fair answer from Daniels, correct? I would agree. I think he was in complete shock. Or maybe even embarrassed, correct? I think you would be more shocked than embarrassed. When you find somebody having committed suicide, you, I think the word shock comes to mind. I mean, it's... Well, he's being asked his perception on seeing her there. It's fair to be embarrassed by that, seeing her naked, correct? If I can only talk for myself, I, I mean, if I had to render us be in that similar position, I would be more shocked. I mean... And he also testified she was not breathing. Do you recall that? I do recall that. Will you agree with that? <coughs> I, I, I can't talk for Mr. Daniels. That's what he said. Well, you were there, sir. I thought we could get her back to life again because she was still warm. But if you're asking me, did I recall her not breathing, the answer is no. I, 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 all I was interested in was helping her. Well, isn't it so that she was basically lifeless? She, she was just lying, hanging there. No, no sense of life yes. that you could perceive, correct? You could describe it as being lifeless, yes. Yeah. She was, yes. And in that sense, from what you also perceived, it's fair comment by Mr. Daniels to say she was not breathing. Isn't that so? I, I'm not going to comment on Mr. Daniels' observation. I would agree with your description when you said that she was lifeless. So yes, that's how I would have described it. But I don't recall thinking to myself, is she not breathing? I just, I don't recall thinking that. And his recollection was that this course cord was loosely around her neck and it could easily take it off. That's what he testified, yes. But you differ from that. As covered earlier, thank you, Mr. Panasberg. Have a seat. He's covered the issue about the knot, etc. Good. Can we move on? As the court pleases. to uh, continue with something new. Can we just have a five minute break? Um, it's about the gown and I didn't have it here in the last couple of days, it was brought this morning. Uh, I just want to check before we start with that part of the evidence. It's now um, 10 past 12. I think we can adjourn until 12 city and then carry on from there. Yeah, and can I just get an indication until what time can we sit, my lady? I'm happy to settle two latest half past two today. As the court pleases. Thank you. Thank you.